I was like struck by that uh, the definition of what is required to be a healer because a lot of what you mentioned, you know, the ability to, to nourish others and also nourish yourself, the ability to be vulnerable and to be sensitive to what's going on in your body. Those are things I feel like anybody who's trying to heal themselves needs yeah. to be aware of. I mean, I, you know, I, I had migraine headaches. That's how I got on this path. I, you know, mid, no, early 20s, I was um, living a normal life and all of a sudden chronic migraine headaches began to happen in my life. And I was a typical, you know, typical white American male, you know, just getting out of college and just eating whatever I wanted to eat, um, watching television and not really thinking too much about anything else besides working and kind of partying, to be honest. And this, these things happened. Um, you know, all of a sudden I, I got a migraine headache one day and I had to, you know, really, you know, it's almost like a, a slap from the universe saying, hey, something's about to happen to you if you don't start dialing in what's going on here. And so my first, my first response was, first of all, call my mom. <laughs> like, I didn't call my dad. I didn't right. call my grandfather. I called my mom. And I'm like, mom, this is happening. And this is the first response in, in the middle of the migraine. And so I come from a long uh, lineage of, like, of nurses, really. And so in Connecticut, they know, you know, they know everyone in the, in the hospitals, the major hospitals in Connecticut. And so they were like, hey, we'll, we will, um, we'll give you, you know, we'll get you to the best neurologist in Connecticut. Don't worry. This is all going to be fine who is a man, um, not to say that that takes away from him, but I go there and he, d he does tests on me and it turns out that I have um, something called an ocular migraine. So his first thing is, cool, don't worry about it. We're gonna start prescribing you pharmaceuticals. I didn't, I was not on the natural healing path at that point. So I started taking these drugs and none of them really worked. Some of them would work for a little while and then other ones would not work at all. All of them would stop working after, you know, two or three migraines, which were happening like once a week. Yeah. And so once I got to the point where he, I went back to his office one time and he said, listen, the next thing we got to do here is put you on something that's a preventative medication that's going to change the way that you, it's going to change your moods. And I'm like, I'm like, that's for some reason, even though I was a 23 year old, 24 year old who was like, you know, not really on this path yet, or at least not knowingly on this path. I was like, I can't, I'm not going to do that. Red flag. That's not gonna, <laughs> like that actually got through, you know, and a lot of people, it doesn't. And I'm not saying that I'm, you know, better or worse because of it, but I know a lot of people who go on those meds anyway. For some reason, for me, I'm like, that's going to change the way I feel. That's creepy. I'm not doing it. So I had to figure out other ways. And, you know, when it came down to, long story short, was starting to work with natural medicine and uh, really going into things that were going on in my psyche and turned out to be, at least in my opinion, spiritually, that were related to trauma from my childhood that brought me to my knees, made me get vulnerable, made me surrender to this thing and realize that I wasn't, I wasn't the center of the world, which is what I was taught to be. Yeah. And then it got, so really things I associate with being in my feminine side had to be engaged in order to heal from that. And so that turned into like, you know, traumas coming up that were painful and I had to surrender to and be vulnerable around. And then, you know, working on some things I was eating because once I got surrendered, I got vulnerable and more sensitive to myself. I'm like, wait, what else is making me feel like crap when I eat it? And it turned out that coffee wasn't good for me. That's the beginning of my path. The reason why I mention it is it really does feel like to do the healing work, it's not, it's not even about whether you want to become a healer. It's about all of us becoming this way. You know, if you're suffering from something, and we all suffer, tend to suffer from things at certain points in our life, it isn't necessarily about going to find somebody else who can do this. It's actually about tapping into what a healer needs to, to embody in order to be effective and figuring out how to embody that yourself. Yeah, I think that's very well spoken. And one of the things, for instance, that I, uh, either when I teach people who are studying herbal medicine or when I talk to people or just the way that I approach or at least aspire to if I'm doing it as I want to, um, is to not approach this from an angle of, oh, I'm treating disease or I'm, I'm uh, treating illness or I have a patient in the sense of a doctor patient relationship first of all legally you know not that that really matters in terms of what's ethical or right to do because those yeah. often don't overlap but legally uh, we're not licensed practitioners so we don't legally treat or diagnose but deeper much more deeply and important than that I think that paradigm that model of uh, you know, me sitting behind my desk curing you is not something I want to do, and I don't think it's accurate either. And we have the ability to heal ourselves and to improve our own health. And if I can help somebody 
in that path that they're discovering by passing on information and wisdom that I might have that hopefully will be helpful to them. That's still not me doing it. Uh, I'm not doing anything except being like a conduit of, uh, of uh, information I've been given and synthesized, or I, maybe I, I've arrived at some ideas myself, but it's still not me treating disease. And I think that whole disease model uh, has a lot of flaws as well. And you look either at again, either indigenous wisdom revolving around it, or even uh, alternative healers from, our, uh, from a more modern perspective. There's a wonderful 19th century herbalist. He was an eclectic physician named John Scudder. And he wrote uh, that, you know, disease is not an entity. Disease is not real. Um, disease is uh, uh, an imbalance, right? Uh, so we need to bring things back into balance, but it's not something we're trying to eradicate from the body because it's part of us. It's part of our physiological response. So what's out of balance? What's pushing something in, in a direction that's unhealthy, figuring out what that was and bringing it back to center as best as we can. Um, but looking at you know, uh, things from that military medical perspective that we're trained to do of like, oh, you have a disease, you have to cure it, you have to treat it, you have to kill it, you have to eradicate it, right? And I'm not saying there's no place at all for things that have a strong antimicrobial activity or other things. Um, there are places for those um, aspects of, uh, of protocols to come in uh, and be appropriate. But overall, that just general paradigm of how you're looking at yourself uh, and when something does go wrong, how you approach it as, uh, is it something foreign that's invaded that you now need to destroy? Or is it something that is part of you, but has become unhealthy and you now need to figure out how to, how to shift that physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually? Because I think all of those things are the same actually.